think it's probably an easier way for you left-handed folks to uh, work the freeway. Oh, I'm gonna get some bolts. Oh, yeah, right. Well, now we have to wait. You the condition of your rifle. Welcome to the after action report for Frank Proctor's carving course. Before I begin, I'd like to send out a special thanks to Black Flag Firearms for supplying me with an AR 15 for testing. You can visit them at blackflagfirearms.com. I'd also like to thank 101 Holsters and Holster Loops for pulling together and sponsoring me in the class. You can pick up excellent Kydex equipment at 101holsters.com and awesome polymer based attachment systems at holsterloops.com. As a personal side note, it has always been a dream of mine to make this happen and couldn't believe that it actually did. I am so appreciative and humbled to all those who have believed and still do believe in me and what I am trying to accomplish. Okay, enough mushy stuff. Let's get started. In day one, we started off with a safety brief. The terminology was a little different, but overall the four rules were covered. Don't point your death machine at anything you don't want to shoot, and as soon as your eyes come off the sights, the safety selector should be actuated. Proctor went on and explained the four components of achieving the correct ratio of speed and accuracy as defined as performance shooting, processing, control, mechanics, and movement. We quickly got ourselves loaded up and down range. We proceeded to work different exercises, not drills. The difference between the two is that with exercises, you are learning and observing and are building yourself up. And where with drills, you are memorizing a specific sequence that you may or may not ever see off a square range again. You do memorize certain skill sets with drills, but not nearly as much as with exercises. A couple of unique things that I took notice of right away was that we did not have our own individual targets to tape up constantly or rotate out of with different shooters. We did rotate shooters on some targets, but for the most part we shared targets while on the line and were encouraged to shoot at targets that were not in the line with us. Obviously we were instructed not to shoot targets that were at the other end of the line, but with the targets to the immediate left and right were definitely encouraged. Proctor wanted to start working our brains to be moving away from sensory deprivation, which can be triggered by too much target focus, thus multiple target engagements and random round counts were focused on. After working the line with us and running exercises, he quizzed us on what we saw. The recurring answer was, I'm not sure or nothing, however there were a few students who did have something to say and were able to report on their findings. The exercise was about seeing what happens during the half second cadence of fire and seeing the reticle come back to the target and noticing how remarkably slow that occurrence is, which gives you an idea on how fast the brain can process and handle information and then come up with a way to adjust or fix whatever is happening. The unorthodox nature of the class continued for the rest of the day. Frank ran the line to monitor for safety constantly and had to help improve students' techniques here and there. The class did very well at monitoring ourselves and each other, which is great considering the amount of people in the class and how Proctor had to manage it by himself. There were about 24 people in the class total. We then moved into working on positions of readiness and maneuvering with a fully extended rifle. I apologize for the lack of footage here. I had some equipment issues that could not be remedied on the range and therefore lost some great opportunities to capture these moments. Essentially, after working on various positions of readiness, we utilized them by working Proctor's Quazilla exercise. You can view the drill on his YouTube page to get an idea of what we did. After Quadzilla, we had some friendly competitions to engage in. I lost. Actually, no one won. It was an all-or-nothing game. If you missed any shots, you were automatically out. That concluded day one. Day two, we started off with more exercises. Once again, the day was more oriented around processing and figuring out what exactly our targets wanted us to do or needed us to do. The next notable exercise was extremely exciting. Eight targets were set up. Each target was numbered one through eight. However, the targets were not set up sequentially, so two was not next to one, and five was not next to six. They were at somewhat varying distances, and each target had its own instructions on how to engage. Some had certain shapes with tally marks written on them. Some had tracks that you had to guide your optic through. Also in front of each target was a barrel 
which had a rifle on it. Some had ammo, some didn't. Um, this was definitely a huge break from anything I had ever done in any class. I've never seen anything quite this unique, and this was an exercise that definitely required you to think. Uh, the only issue, in my opinion, is that you can and cannot really assess yourself at the end of it all. You could have easily have blazed through the course of fire and just lied to yourself and say, yeah, I got all my hits. Yeah, I never deviated from the line. But you'd just be cheating yourself. But at the same time, you should know whether or not you got your hits because you should have seen that moment just before the shot broke and whether or not you were on target enough to make that shot happen. However, I know from working with newer shooters, and I remember when I first started shooting, I was never quite sure whether or not I had made that shot until I was able to go downrange and tape the target. Over time it became easier to call my shots, especially when I started competing a lot more. Overall, this was a fantastic exercise and a great way to put together all the components we had been working so diligently on. After that, we took a break, loaded up some more, and Proctor started working on us to understand how to move with the rifle and shoot on the move. I struggled with this component of the class. I wasn't exactly sure what he was looking for at times. I think it was a you say tomato, I say tomato kind of moment. In retrospect, I feel like we were talking about the same thing and thinking the same thing, just had different ways of relaying those experiences. Uh, one thing that every single person watching this video should take note of is how little Proctor shot during the class. He is not a show off. He is there to demonstrate what he is talking about when necessary. He shot very rarely throughout the two days, which was great. I'd rather have the instructor monitoring and demonstrating when necessary than standing on the line with me constantly shooting. I have no use for celebrity camps and show-offs. Yeah, it makes for a good story, but my time, my money is worth more than a good story. We then moved on to working with tactical reloads and emergency reloads. Proctor, of course, had found some useful tips over his many years of shooting, which I'd never seen before in regards to working with AR-15 magazines, which was awesome and definitely did help shed some time on my reloads and improve the overall flow of the entire action of loading the gun up again. Eventually, we moved to learning about creating stability with the rifle, learning how to properly apply a C-clamp with the support side hand, and learning how to wrap the sling efficiently. We had another friendly competition at the end of the class. Uh, I lost, of course. In summary, to be perfectly honest, after my first day, I was disappointed. Felt like there was more downtime than necessary. However, when I came home and started transcribing my notes and my memories, I surprisingly had typed out over six pages in single space and thought, whoa, we did learn a lot. The class is definitely a you get what you put into it deal. If you are looking for really basic drills, this is not for you. If you are looking for someone to teach you the ins and outs of malfunction clearances, look elsewhere. As a matter of fact, we barely touched upon any of the real control aspects of working with the rifle, which some students did suffer from later on in the course when things required you to set up the rifle for certain scenarios, i.e. emergency reloads. I would not recommend the class to a brand spanking new shooter. I would definitely say get your feet wet, understand how to zero your rifle, and know the controls of the AR-15 or whatever system you're bringing before you come to the class. That way it's much easier for you to follow along with what Frank is discussing at that moment in time as opposed to being completely lost. Which did seem to happen to some students. I found myself often being asked, hey, how am I supposed to do that thing again? Or wait, are we doing that one thing or the new thing? It's not that the students weren't listening because I saw them looking at Frank. Watching him and not goofing off, sometimes what he says is a little esoteric if you haven't obsessed over shooting, and some of it is a little complex for newer shooters. Also, some of the newer shooters and students would come to me directly asking essentially to re-explain what had just been said. I'm not sure where the disconnect was at times because I felt like everything Frank explained was pretty clear and easy to get a hold of. However, I have been obsessing over shooting for many years, so maybe I take some of the terminology or analogies for granted. In the end, would I recommend the class? Absolutely. Especially if you've already trained with a few other schools. This class will definitely give you a different perspective on shooting. We need more people who are obsessed with shooting and efficiency like Proctor is. We need more people who manage to bridge the gap between tactical shooting and becoming very proficient in the competition world. They are a rare breed, and we need to absorb what these people have to say when they do come around every once in a great while. I definitely enjoyed the class. Proctor's charisma and command over the knowledge of shooting is second to none. He is humble, knows how to have fun, and definitely knows how to teach. Just needs to speak up a little bit.
Recommendations for fellow shooters who are considering attending bring more ammo than whatever it says on the course description. R said 1,000, I brought 1,200 and ran out of 1,200. Bring lots of water, as none was provided at the facilities, which is fairly common, and of course wear sunscreen. You can get signed up through aliastraining.com and find Proctor's Equipment DVDs at wayofthegun.us. Thank you so much for sticking it through till the end. I hope this video has some useful information for you. I will be posting up more lengthy AAR at makingmorenoise.com in the coming weeks. So heads up for that. Once again, thanks for watching and stay safe.